you know, the one piece of advice that I want you to all take out is understand that every time you open your mouth, you are pitching. Every time you open your mouth, you're pitching. So you are in some sense representing yourself and your company every time you open your mouth. So think about how you want to represent your company in the first 20 seconds of opening your mouth. Because most people are not going to give you more than 20 seconds. So you've got to represent yourself in a way that gets across what you're doing that is incredibly compelling. So that people say, I met that person who has that amazing technology that does something that nobody else can do. That's what they, you want them to walk away with. They're not going to walk away with your pitch deck. They're not going to wipe away with your demo. They're not even, you know, they may even walk away with your card, but they're not going to put their, they're going to throw away your card unless you left the impression that you've got something incredible. So the problem is, in a situation like this, you've only got 20 seconds to do that. So figure out how, in 20 seconds, you can leave that impression on everyone you meet. That's my I would say sort of like learn, like understand and learn sales and learn storytelling, learn copywriting. These are going to be really valuable skills for whatever you do in your business life or as an employee in general. Um, and then I would say the second advice is actually pay more attention to customers or potential customers and investors and fundraising. Um, I just see so many people contort themselves and their businesses to make an investor happy. That's actually not how you make a great business. You can contort yourself to to support customers and find customers and help them solve their solutions. That's it, right? So there's just too much focus on fundraising fun and actually getting money from investors when you should be getting money from customers. I would just leave you with uh, a probably quote you've all heard attributed to Mark Andreessen who talks about strong opinions loosely held, which is to say you, you have to sort of strike that balance between very driven and what you're trying to do but also being able to take on board feedback when you get to a point where you need to pivot or you need to shut things down, you need to make some hard decisions. It breaks our hearts when we see a really promising entrepreneur just plowing into a wall at 100 miles an hour just forever on an idea that just is not going anywhere. And they could, you know, just by making, taking on that difficult feedback, maybe pivot and find something that really works. So that's, that's number one. I think the second thing that I would, I would think about is also, um, I guess it goes back to sort of solving problems that you really want to solve. Realizing that this is a really long journey and you're going to be tested throughout and you're going to get a lot of pressure to, to back out, to go get your job or do other things. And so really, you know, focus on things that, that you really are excited about and you're passionate about. There's nothing worse than finding people that, you know, kind of looked at the landscape and said, oh, this is an idea, nobody's doing this, let me do that. But they're not really emotionally invested in that. And it comes through. Um, and that ends up being very transparent to investors. Um, then the third thing I'll leave you with is an insight that I had a long time ago when I was an entrepreneur last time, which was, and this is true for life, it's not true for, for startups, is that most of the big decisions that get made about you are made about you when you're not in the room. And so think about, it goes back to storytelling, getting people to be your evangelist, getting people to advocate for you, getting, you know, being able to tell a crisp, compelling story so that venture partner goes, wow, that's interesting. And they go back to their partnership and they say, I saw the most interesting company last week. And they start singing your praises and they build momentum. And that's true of customers, it's true of investors, it's true of partners, is remember that you're only one person and you want a small team. You can't do this 24 hours a day. So if you could tell a compelling story that really captures people's attention, they will repeat it to, on your behalf when you're not there, and decisions will be made on your behalf, hopefully the good ones, because you seeded that, mind, that, that, that idea in people's mind to really fight for you, and that's something that I learned as well. Outreach-oriented venture capital firm in Silicon Valley. Most venture capital firms, traditionally, they would basically sort of stay in their bubble and wait for brilliance to come to them. Our big idea was we were going to go out to the world and find brilliance. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That wasn't intended to be an applause line, but I appreciate that. We're, we're hoping to have a conversation.